Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the daily current affairs analysis of 13 July 2024. And in this video, we are going to discuss the important news article from Hindu newspaper as well as Indian Express newspaper. Along with that, previous years questions are also going to be discussed. Let's get into the discussion of this. The first article talks about India Austria relationship, and this particular news article came in the yesterday's explain section of uh, Indian Express. Yesterday there were so many articles, and I could not able to cover this. So today we are going to include uh, in this today. is current affairs discussion and today there were very few articles which are important from exam perspective so because of time issue we were not able to cover this now let's get into the discussion of india austria relationship news is that prime minister modi is visiting austria and in this news article the mou is the or the agreement signed between india and austria leadership that has been discussed and what i'm going to do is i'll give the background information also i think this is the first time we are discussing austria relationship so we'll do that and finally we'll uh, end up with a previous year's questions so let's start the discussion with the present particular news the content that is mentioned in this news article and as i told you the news is that prime minister modi is visiting the austria and this is the visit of indian prime minister after 41 years so this is a very long time after 41 years indian prime minister is visiting the austria see we established a diplomatic relationship in 1949 only since after the independence of india but in 1949 the austria was a part of uh, soviet union at that point of time and soviet union from soviet union austria it got the independence in the year of 1955 so since 1955 we are having that cordial relationship with austria even though our economic relationship and other geopolitical relationship it's not very great uh, we are just it's one of the countries in european union and we are focusing on other countries in european union we are we have very strong relationship with france and germany it's fine and uk now uk is out of european union so we have deeper relationship with other countries in european union somehow we have ignored austria now this the step taken by prime minister modi clearly giving the signals that we want to focus on other countries also very recently we yesterday we had a discussion regarding efta also european free trade association uh, apart from eu we are focusing on these countries also so it clearly giving the signal india is clearly giving the signal that we are going to have that inclusive approach with respect to almost all the countries and very precisely when you uh, you look at the european union we are going to increase our establish our relationship in a deeper perspective so this is the message he is giving and another aspect is uh, the meet is happening in the vienna vienna is the capital of australia and this meet is uh, the bilateral meeting of uh, russia is also happened in this reason so this is giving a signal there is a balanced approach from indian side also one side it is usa usa the western bloc another side it is the russia so india is doing that balancing act between usa and the russia so that is the reason visiting vienna it makes sense at this point of time now let's see the arrangements or the agreements we have signed the both the leadership have signed the first and foremost aspect here is the affirmations have come both the leadership they have uh, talked about free and open indo pacific region indo pacific region the chinese aggression you all aware of it and india is not happy with that and even western countries are also not happy with the aggress aggressive stand taken by china and here uh, signing uh, agreements or signing memorandum of memorandum of um, sorry memorandum of understanding or even giving the press statement with respect to uh, indo pacific region it clearly gives signal to the china so one thing is there's a countering china aspect is there and then we are talking about ukraine discussion or ukraine conflict also see india and austria we both are maintaining the similar stand at the global level both india and uh, austria we tell that yes this has this has to be sorted out in a international by following international order but we both uh, india and austria we are maintaining that uh, uh, business or the trade communication with russia so the balance approach or the neutral stand has been taken both by austria and india and here also similar kind of uh, statement has been given so with respect to ukraine conflict so second aspect is ukraine conflict and the third aspect that uh, both the countries had a discussion with respect to uh, economic partnership and economic partnership see uh, our economic partner or economic uh, arrangement with austria it's very low now we want to increase the economic engagement and in the economic front we are focusing on green technology 
both the countries and we have uh, signed a memorandum of understanding understanding on uh, digital technologies and infrastructure development and renewable energy and smart cities also so austria has agreed to help india to develop the smart city so these are the economic partnership agreements between india and austria and under this very precisely the renewable energy renewable energy see uh, india we are focusing on green hydrogen mission and austria also they have a target of hydrogen uh, strategy, sorry strategy and austria's hydrogen strategy and india's green hydrogen mission so we are collaborating with each other austria and india we are helping each other especially in the sector of hydrogen and moving ahead in the same aspect of renewable energy the carbon emission or carbon neutrality this is another topic here and india we have a target to become a carbon neutral country by uh, 2070 and european union has the target of uh, becoming carbon neutral by the 2000 year 2050 but austria it has a target to become a carbon neutral by the 2040 so we had a discussion and collaboration in this aspect of carbon neutrality also see uh, technology is very important austria they have these kind of technology so india is collaborating so that we can also develop uh, low carbon emission technologies and manufacturing sector focusing on lower emission or reduced emission of carbon from the country so from that perspective also australia sorry it's not australia it's austria's help it's very important and finally the yoga and ayurveda these were also discussion between two countries see yoga and ayurveda their usage and their presence is also increase in the european continent and austria also the the awareness is increasing so there india has requested uh, austria to give that push factor so uh, in turn this is going to help the cultural exchange so we had a discussion on uh, here the economic front we had a discussion and now cultural front also we had a discussion especially focusing on yoga and ayurveda and even we had a discussion regarding united nations reform also see india want to be become a one, uh, one among the permanent members and for that united nations reforms austria also supports it even though the it, it directly did not mention that it is going to push for india's permanent membership but it has supported on the whole the compress comprehensive reforms of united nation and also it supported that there should be a multilateralism it's not that one block is headed by usa another block is headed by russia these kind of arrangements should not be there there should be a multiculturalism sorry multilateralism and it's in this multilateralism we need a a representation from global south also so for that austria also gave a green signal so this is what uh, the meeting between indian leadership and the austrian leadership and this is the first part and the next part is with respect to india and austria relationship over over, over these years and i told you that we established uh, diplomatic relations since 1947 right after two years of independence at 1947 it was one of the part of soviet union but later in 1965 sorry 1955 uh, austria got independence and in order to get this independence the indian leadership played very important role at that point of time the negotiations between soviet union and austria it helped austria to become independent and the, in this negotiation india played very significant role so on the whole if you look at it it is uh, this year 2024 it is a 75th year of establishing diplomatic relationship between two country even though at that point of time it was not a country but still we can celebrate the diplomatic relationship established between two geographical locations now and see uh, till now i told you that somewhere we ignored or uh, the focus was not on the austria austria we are focusing on big big countries we are focusing on uh, even uh, the germany and uh, france and uh, even switzerland also even geographically switzerland is a smaller country when you compare to austria but somewhere our focus was not on the austria see the main reason is economy matters a lot the, if you look at the india and austria economic relationship our trade is around 2.84 billion it's around only 3 billion dollars 3 billion dollars is 
it's quite a small amount if you think of a european uh, union country from a european union so the potential was extremely low trade potential is extremely lower and also investment perspective also it was not up to the mark so somewhere india was not focusing from the austrian perspective but from geopolitical perspective yes there is a, a huge potential between india and uh, uh, austria see in in european union if you have a good relationship with one country it's easier for you to connect with other countries in the grouping so there is a advantage so that is the reason india is trying to develop these kind of relationship uh, almost all the countries of european union and somewhere we have ignored austria and now we are taking that positive step to develop with austria also see uh, if you look at the agreements or the these kind of uh, here in this article we had a discussion we had made a so many a memorandum of understanding and agreements these kind of agreements it was done late in 1898 sorry 1983 after that it took a lot of time to involve uh, you know uh, at the prime minister level president level to sign these kind of agreements in 1983 we had a Indo-Austrian Joint Economic Commission, even though we made this kind of commission and an arrangement, but uh, economic relationships were not very great at that point of time. So, at, in 1983, the main focus was between ministries, Indian ministries and the Austrian ministries and also chambers of commerce and industries, Indian chambers of commerce and uh, Austrian chambers of commerce. This connection was in initiated, but it did not go in deep. So, in 2022, if you look at the trade relationship. The overall trade was around $3 billion only and let's see the key Indian exports. We are exporting electronic goods, apparel, textiles, footwear, rubber articles, vehicles and railway parts. And we were importing machineries, mechanical appliances, railway parts, iron and steel. And uh, these are the imports and exports with respect to India and Austria relationship. And very recently, uh, in 2030, it's not very recent, almost 10 years ago, in 2013, uh, Australia, sorry, Austria it launched first satellites and those first uh, two satellites were launched from uh, India's, India's Satish Dhawan Space Center near the Sri Harikota. See, on the whole, the role of Australia, uh, sorry, Austria, I'm sorry that uh, again, uh, it's coming Australia. So, please rectify it if I had used Australia in between. It is quite confusing when whenever you pronounce this. See, the important uh, role from a geopolitical perspective is the location of Austria here and the location, it gives that link to the Central Europe and the Central Europe and the Eastern Europe. See, if you look at the Western Europe, we have a France, we have a uh, uh, Germany, these countries we have a very good relationship and even with Netherlands we have a good relationship, Switzerland we have a good relationship. But if you look at the eastern countries, we don't have a significant presence there, that is one thing. And another thing, even economic connection or engagement with these central and uh, eastern European countries, it is very less. So we are taking that positive step to engage with these countries also. So in that direction, Austrian relationship plays very important role. So whenever we had a discussion with respect to uh, bilateral relationship, I always bifurcate into four categories. First is economic relationship and uh, second is geopolitical and the third is cultural and the fourth is defense related. Economic relationship, you know that uh, trade is also very less investment. We don't have a substantial investment from both the countries. And geopolitical, yes, this is quite important here. UNSC reforms, it is supporting and the China aggression uh, that also been mentioned by Austrian leadership. And in order to have that connectivity factor with European Union, yes, it plays very important role. And with respect to cultural connection, uh, yoga and Ayurveda, we had a discussion that uh, somewhere it has been accepted and India is also pushing this yoga Ayurveda so that we could have that cultural connection. Along with that, let's uh, see at 1845. See 1845 only at that point of time, Vienna University. In Vienna University, they were teaching Sanskrit. So this is one... Uh, this cultural connection goes back to the British era and also in the year of 1880 a separate chair has been established in Vienna University with respect to the uh, study of Indology. So these are the relation with respect to cultural aspect and defense we don't have a, a very a substantial defense relationship neither we uh, in, uh, indulge in a bilateral exercise and all these things. So only these four uh, sorry economy 
geopolitical and the cultural connection and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2023 last year prelims it's current affairs related question the stability and growth pact of european union is a treaty that three statements have been given and you need to find how many statements among these three are correct the first statement it limits the levels of budgetary deficit in the countries of european union this is true see if you look at the question stability and the growth pact this particular pact directly deals with the fiscal aspect of entire european union so the main objective is to maintain the fiscal stability financial stability in european union and yes it limits the levels of budgetary deficit this is true and the second statement makes the countries of european union to share their infrastructure facilities this is this is not the agenda here and the third is enables the countries of european union to share their technologies this is also false so only one is the right option here and let's move to the next news the next news is with respect to pds pdfs pds stands for public distribution system and public distribution system is must and should topic for the uh, upsc and especially for the mains examination see the news article here this is an editorial in this editorial if you look at the heading the pds impact on household expenditure see what exactly this article is talking about is pds you know that you get a, a, a wheat rice these kind of kerosene these kind of items in a subsidized prices either free or subsidized prices it depends on your bpl which category you belong to so by giving this you are saving some money and whatever money you save how exactly you are using that saved money that is the question here and to deal with that one survey has been conducted household expenditure so where exactly households are spending so that details has been mentioned in this news article so somewhere minute details regarding uh, what percent of uh, uh, money is spent on vegetables all these things and uh, non vegetarian food all these things has been mentioned here you are uh, you don't require these thing actually there are three four points that are important i'll just go through with those three four points that would be sufficient but after that i'll give the background information regarding pds pds is extremely very very important it's a hot topic for the upsc and it's one among the must and should topic that there are few topics in upsc like mg narega pds these you should be aware of it even though there might not be question on it but you can use these concepts in your answers it gives that content it gives that fodder for your examination so let's see those two three points which are important in this uh, article then i'll give the background information regarding pds here public distribution system this is the social security program of india see we have a national food security act of 2013 under national food security act government has given a promise to the country a legal promise and in this uh, legal promise 75% of the rural population they are going to get food at the subsidized prices and 50% of the urban population they are going to get the food uh, grains at the subsidized prices on the whole it is around 67% of the total population of our country they are going to receive the subsidized food grains and how are, how are how exactly government is going to manage this through the public distribution system so public distribution system it directly linked to the social security directly one thing is social security and second thing is food security so it directly linked to these concepts here and in this article it has been mentioned that see recently a survey has been conducted household consumption expenditure survey 2022 2023 in this survey it has been mentioned that households they are receiving uh, subsidized food grains and uh, some of the category of people they are getting for free of cost and some of them are getting for subsidized prices so on the whole this is directly impacting the social welfare of our country so there is a positive aspect uh, with respect to pds system but whatever the administrative data it is giving whatever the admin administrative data we have with respect to pds and somewhere the reality is different from the data so we need to work in that direction we have to keep a target and we have to make sure that we are achieving this target so administrative data and at the ground level the reality that is quite different and this is what the important point we need to focus here so whatever the survey these kind of analysis they are coming up with uh, with respect to pdf pds but if you look at the ground level the data it does not make sense if you observe at the ground level if you uh, compare it with a survey report so this is the aspect and 
going ahead the author gives the minute minute details that uh, now what is the average income and how exactly household expenditure is going on in the urban region in the rural region these kind of detailed analysis is there it is not at all important even if you look at it you can see here uh, 2000 in the urban 5 percent 1070 these kind of numericals are there you can directly ignore the entire these kind of things see the reason is you cannot you cannot able to remember all these minute minute details and the second thing is there's not that much important to mention in your answers also so ignore you can ignore this particular article but let me give you guys background information regarding pds system pds public distribution system as the name indicate public distribution what exactly uh, it is going to distribute it is going to distribute the food grains and it is going to distribute beyond food grains also beyond food grains we have a kerosene and we have a oil we have iodized salts so it depends on the geographical location food grains usually wheat rice sugar kerosene these are the standard items and beyond these uh, standard items some other products are, are also going to be distributed based on the consumption based on the geographical locations spices also pulses also edible oil these kind of other things are also going to be distributed and ministry is very important you need to uh, remember the ministry also pds it works under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution so there is no confusion in that but remember that you need to mention in your answers also so ministry of consumer of uh, consumer affairs food and public distribution here see the main uh, intention behind a public distribution is that pdm system is rationing the food items See, initially it started right after the world war two world war two india we are facing severe food crunch in our country so in order to deal with that government came up with a uh, public distribution system just to have a proper arrangement and the distribution system of food grains in the country so that was the initial stage but later on the proper public distribution system was arranged under this particular scheme of pds only after nine after independence so right after independence this pdm system was enhanced and proper implementation of pds system uh, was uh, started at that point of time only see we even you can say that just uh, before that independence only the proper working on pdf in our country has been started so initially first step was during world war ii but uh, after the independence it got it got a pds got a clear uh, structure and clear way to follow this now the next question is uh, what is see it comes under the ministry of consumer affairs central government now what is the role of central government here see for pds there are two both center as well as the state governments they have the role to play center government i told you that directly comes under the consumer affairs minister so what central government does is it helps in the procurement procurement of food grains storage of uh, food grains and also distribution distribution to whom distribution to the state government so central government procure the food grains and it distribute to the state government and it is a duty of the state government to come up with the names of the beneficiaries distributing the ration card and identifying the families also see based on the socio-economic survey socio-economic data uh, state governments have that authority to identify the beneficiaries even for the below poverty line above poverty line all these things state governments has a control so when you when it comes to the pds public distribution system both central government and the state government they have they have role to play central government it directly involves in procurement it directly involved in a, a storage and the distribution state government it identifies the beneficiaries and it gives the ration card to them and based on that ration, ration card is the provision uh, it, if i have a ration card i can go to the fair price shop and in that fair price shop based on my uh, uh, privilege i can get the ration here so state government it is going to find the beneficiaries and it is going to give distribute the ration card and all those things and this is going to maintain the fair price shops also so all these comes under the state government so on the whole the managing the see on the larger level at the macro level uh, central government has a control but at the operation level the operational responsibilities comes under the state government so both center and state they have a role to play with respect to public distribution system of a country 
and i told you that center uh, central government it comes up with a procurement storage distribution and who exactly going to play this role here it's a food corporation of india that is going to procure the food grain storage distribution all these things happen so even for the food uh, corporation of india there is one more body agricultural price commissions this agricultural price commission they help food corporation of india especially if uh, if ci want to procure some uh, wheat or rice then it has to quote some price level prices also and this prices are uh, that idea of the prices it is all given by this particular commission agriculture price commission it gives that input to fci based on the input fci is going to uh, buy rice sugar and pulses based on the price quoted by apc so uh, under pa uh, pds you need to remember fci also you need to remember the agriculture price commission also we have had discussion regarding fci so many times that is the reason i am not including that also on the whole just remember that center and the state the difference of center and the state and in the center fci is a important aspect here important uh, agency uh, with respect to procurement and now i told you that in 1947 47 the proper implementation started but later in 1992 a new initiation has been taken with respect to pds that is rpds rpds stands for revamp public distribution system and this revamp public distribution system it is focusing on those excluded people and who are these excluded people if somebody is living in uh, far areas hilly region and extreme remote areas and see the rural areas where transport facilities are very uh, low and accessibility factor is very low and there are some inaccessible places and there are some places where very few houses are there where only 5-10 families are living in some location so for these kind of situation these kind of arrangements uh, we, we have come up with a revamp pds and this was started in 1992 and in 1997 one more changes has been done with respect to pdf that is uh, tpds targeted pds targeted pds it is mainly focusing on the poor section it is mainly focusing on the people belong to the below poverty line so these are the these are the details so 1947 pds 1992 rpds revamp pds mainly for the people who are living in the inaccessible places and 1997 tpds targeted pds this is mainly for focusing the poor people so this is the information background information now let's see the importance also you must be uh, starting only i told you that the food security along with that food security it is a nutritional security also now the millets have been uh, millets also been added into the, the pds category then subsidize uh, the sorry stabilizing the food prices also since the procurement is happening if all of the sudden food prices increases fci can release these food grains into the market so that uh, it helps in stabilizing the uh, prices so that is also uh, uh, one of the important role of pds then comes the maintaining buffer stock of food grains in the country for the emergency or drought or famine kind of situation then come redistribution of grains so these are the importance of pdf along with that let's see the negative aspects or the issues also and what are the issues the identification of beneficiaries so this comes under the ambit of state government and time and again we are seeing there are leakage of leakages in the pds system and uh, the uh, food grains it is not reaching the beneficiaries so why this is happening you are identifying the beneficiaries that is the first thing and also because of corruption and all it is not reaching it and leakage is happening and procurement is not happening properly storage issues even there there were some news articles few months ago where whatever the storage that was done by fci there also these food grains they got some kind of disease and so many uh, very large chunk of the stored food grains they had to discard discard it by these kind of issues in storage and procurement this is also going to trouble the pdf system so these issues need to be sorted out and then come uh, crop diversification see procure fci it is giving uh, it is procuring rice wheat these kind of crops by doing this what is happening is farmers are usually since there is a procurement uh, support is there from the government so what uh, it it is doing is it is discouraging the crop diversity so farmers are not even uh, going for a millet since they know that government is procure wheat government is procure uh, rice so they are mainly focusing on wheat and rice rather than focusing on other millets pulses so this is discouraging the crop diversification and this has become another negative aspect of pds and finally environmental issues also especially for uh, wheat and rice over utilization of uh, fertilizers and all these are directly impacting the soil fertility so these are the issues of 
PDS. And let's see previous year question on this particular topic. Question was asked in 2022. What are the major challenges of PDS public distribution system in India? How can it be made effective and transparent? And let's move to the next news. Next news is regarding PMLA and PMLA we are having discussions very often. Again, the similar article has come that is ED cannot make arrest under PMLA on a whim, says the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has made an observation that see you are enforcement directorate is the implementing agency of PMLA and it has told ED enforcement directorate that see you cannot arrest persons on your whims and wishes it has to be proper it has to be legal see there is always a uh, criticism with respect to pmla we have a corruption act in our country and supreme court time and again has told that if you find a particular politician or industrialist if he is involved in these kind of activity arrest them under corruption act but what ED is doing is it is arresting persons under PMLA Act. So this is quite challenging here. See the uh, the issue here is under Corruption Act, the person it's easy for a person to get a bail. But under PMLA, it's regarding money laundering, and because of money laundering, getting bail is extremely extremely difficult. So uh, somewhere Supreme Court has made an observation: you are arresting uh, the political leaders based on evidences which are very uh, which are not very strong so it looks like you are doing it on a whims and wishes so this should not be the way and especially this uh, uh, observation has come with respect to mr arvind kejriwal arrest and uh, time and again uh, even the, uh, the state the high courts of the state go, state also given this kind of observation that don't go for uh, uh, whims and wishes of your own you follow the legal procedure if there is a strong evidence yes you can go under you can go and arrest a person under pmla but if there is a clear corruption charges you have to arrest a person under corruption charges only so this instructions have been given and one more time it, the same instruction has been given by the supreme court here also so this is the content of this news article so let me but let me give you guys background information regarding PMLA Act also. This act was passed in the year of 2002. See, the main reason was India has signed the Vienna Agreement. So, once you signed the Vienna Convention, whatever, when, whenever you sign the international convention and conferences, one thing signature. After signing, you need to ratify it. How do you ratify it? By going through with domestic laws only. So, whenever you ratify, it is your mandatory aspect that you have to go through with a domestic law. At national level, you have to implement a law. So, that is the reason for Vienna Convention, India has signed it and India has ratified it. So, after ratifying it, there is a mandatory clause. At national level, you need to have one law. This Vienna Convention is regarding money laundering and it is regarding the terror financing. So, in order to implement this particular aspect, PMLA has been established in our country in 2002 and this is a criminal law and this criminal mainly focuses on money laundering aspect here. So, if a person has been found out that he is involved in money laundering, so there is a provision has been mentioned in this uh, particular law that is property of that particular person can be uh, confiscated either through a judicial orders or by the ED finally that will be contested in the court but there is a provision for the confiscation of property this is one thing and second aspect is almost all the financial agencies in our country comes under the ambit of PMLA and it includes banks and uh, mutual funds and stock market brokers and uh, financial intermediaries along with that this remember this RBI also the people working in the RBI also comes under the ambit of prevention of money laundering act of 2002 and next the thing is who is going to be the implementing agency that is enforcement directorate is the implementing agency of PML. And this is the information, background information. And let's see previous year question on this particular topic. Question was asked in 2021. Discuss how emerging, emerging technologies and globalization contribute to money laundering. Elaborate measures to tackle the problem of money laundering both at national and international levels. Let's move to the next article. The next article is regarding sustainable development goals. And what is the news? Niti Aayog has released a report. And in this, this report is with respect to sustainable development goal. See, sustainable development goal, this uh, we have a 15-year target. 
and this were implemented in the year of 2015 and we have a target by 2030 we need to achieve these goals the sustainable goals we have a 15 year target so once in a while niti io come up with a reports and in this report it talks about are we moving in that direction are we achieving the targets all these details will be given last time i think in 2018 niti ayog has released a report after three years in 2015 it is implemented so after three years one report has been released by niti ayog. and now in 20 now it has been a uh, report has been released with respect to 2022 data so are we in the path of achieving sdg all these aspects have been discussed here so if you look at the news article if you look at the uh, marking here if it's visible you can see here see total on an average india uh, this niti ayog report has given 71 out of 100 in 2018 at that point of time it has given 57 out of 100 so clearly there is an improvement so that is clearly visible national average is 71 it means that we are seeing a development we are moving towards sustainable achieving the sustainable development goal this is one aspect and second is if you look at the top two countries sorry top two states Uttarakhand and the Kerala with a uh, rate of with a total marking of 79 so they are almost nearing almost 80 percent of the target has been achieved by uh, Uttarakhand and Kerala it's more almost around uh, 11 states if you look at it they have crossed the national average here but still there is a long way to go and this is one information with respect to that is uh, average score is 71 and uh, Uttarakhand Kerala this is the top two states of our country on the way then the second information is there are two sectors one is health sector and the second one is education sector these education and health sector they are doing extremely well so whatever the targets we have under SDG we are on the way to achieve this health and, and in the education sector the main reason with respect to health sector is uh, let me write it down here health sector there are two aspects one thing better public health facilities in our country the infrastructure health related infrastructure it is increasing and at the same time insurance aspect also helping Indian people especially we have a schemes like Aishman Bharat and all and this gives 5 lakh insurance per family so these kind of insurance and the public health infrastructure they are giving boost to the health sector in our country this is one reason and for the education also we are seeing the positive development and for education there one thing is see we are increasing the teacher student ratio initially if you look at it for uh, see the uh, international standard is for a 21 or 22 students we need to have a one teacher but india we are not following this now the teacher student ratio it is improving that is one thing and the second aspect is that due to the targeted invention interventions targeted interventions it may be midday meals it may be uh, subsidies given by the, the gov state governments and even education loans given by the state government these kind of the target in interventions with respect to the education sector also showing us the results so education sector we are seeing the positive development education uh, sorry health sector we are seeing the positive education sector we are seeing the positive development this is what uh, it has been mentioned in this news uh, news article also this, in this report also the third aspect we talked about positive uh, developmental sector but let's see the negative also the the a sectors where we are seeing negative growth and the first aspect is income inequality income inequality we could not able to sort out this issue we are still facing the issue there is a huge income inequality that is existing in our country so that we that need to be sorted out somewhere we are not seeing a uh, big difference here this is one thing because when you compare to the 2018 that score we have reduced in 2018 score was 0.75 but now that score was reduced to the 0.73 somewhere it clearly shows that this aspect has been ignored or it is not giving the result in one is income inequality and second is it's very very important that is gender inequality gender equality even gender equality also been not addressed properly and value of gender gender equality also reducing so these two areas these two sector we are seeing the negative growth here so this uh, report mainly focusing on the what are the positive aspects what are the negative aspects positive aspect comes health and education negative aspects come uh, income and gender inequality this is the information with respect to this news article but let's move ahead and let me give you guys 
background information regarding SDG also. SDG also very important. The reason SDG is important is, see, for almost all the questions, especially in the paper GS3, where you can use uh, sustainable developmental goals as a conclusion. If you don't get conclusion, usually in conclusion, what uh, usually we see the way forward or usually students mention regarding some of the commissions that this commission has mentioned this and we need to achieve this, these kind of answers. But if you don't get any of these kind of things, you can go for a sustainable developmental goals. See, uh, sustainable development I would suggest you to go uh, by heart all the sustainable 17, all the 17 goals and mention the number of sustainable uh, goal number one. So we need to work in this direction. Some kind of conclusion you can write it down. It comes in handy. So see whether it is sustainable developmental goals or United Nations human rights or constitutional provisions. In constitutional provisions, you can go for a fundamental rights. You can go for a DPSP. These comes in handy for the conclusion. If you don't get any proper conclusion, you can use these things in your answers. So that is the reason sustainable developmental goals becomes very important from exam perspective, especially from the mains perspective. Primary perspe perspective, you don't get questions from it, but mains, yes, it's extremely, extremely important. Just like PDS, this is also important topic here. And let's start from the history, from where exactly the idea of sustainable uh, development started in our country. See, after World War II. We were mainly focusing on economic development because there was a severe uh, destruction uh, of the property and life in the European continent and so many people have lost their lives at that point of time and uh, infrastructure was uh, uh, facing severe destruction also level of destruction. So initially we were fo focusing on economic development but in 1972 we have realized that economic development yes it is important we know that. Along with economic development, we need to focus on environment also. So this realization happened in 1972 under Stockholm conference. So this is extremely important 1972. This is the first step towards the environmental conservation. I will talk about sustainable development also. Let's start with it. Initially, this is the realization. Along with economy, we need environmental uh, uh, preservation also fine after nine years in 1983 one commission that is Brutland Commission under Brutland Commission it very precisely talked about sustainable development in 73 we realized that we want economic development as well as the environment development by 83 this commission uh, this commission was created by united nations so the uh, world commission on environment and development at that point of time see we need to balance both environment as well as the economic development in order to do do that what is the right approach the right approach is sustainable development so at that point of time we got the idea of sustainable development it means that see we are we have needs at present so whatever the resources are there those resources you arrange it in a way that the present demands are satisfied at the same time this is going to uh, leave it for a future generation also. So, you are using the needs, meet, meeting the needs of present generation without compromising the future generation. This arrangement has been discussed in 1983 under Brutland Commission here. So, 1983, we came up with the concept of sustainable development. And this sustainable development, after again uh, 9 years, in 1992, it has got the structure proper structure and this structure was discussed in the in under the rio summit the uh, you can say it as a earth summit also so under earth summit we had a proper structure with respect to sustainable development sustainable development environment and the ecology sorry uh, ecosystem uh, environment and the economics economic development and the environment both will be focused on and Yes, we need to develop, we need to have an economic development at the same time, don't compromise with the future generation also. We got a proper structure here. Under 1992 Rio Summit, we had a three initiatives. The first initiative is Rio Declaration. And the second initiative is Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is Agenda for 21st Century. And the next uh, important initiative is Forest Principle. These are three important initiations under Rio Summit and all the three initiatives, the main focus was on the sustainable development only. So, if 
the understanding the realization was in 1972 understanding was in 1983 proper structure was given in the 1992 but later after rio plus that is earth plus 20 rio plus 20 this summit we got the idea of sustainable development goals so 1992 we got the structure but after 20 years we realized that these sustainable development goals are extremely extremely important for the overall upliftment of the uh, entire world whether it is economic uplift, upliftment social upliftment or the environmental upliftment for the overall upliftment sustainable sustainable developmental goals is the answer we realized that and we have come up with a 17 goals also and this uh, 17 goals is given by united nations only united nations general assembly they have given this 17 goal and it has adopted also in 2015 and the sustainable goals for the 15 years initially from 2000 to 2015 we were following millennium millennium mdgs millennium developmental goals and in 2012 the rio 20 that was in 2012 we realized that millennium developmental goals yes we have achieved most of the countries have achieved now we should move to the sustainable developmental goals and again sustainable development goals it is for uh, 15 years from 2015 to 2013 so we have a 17 tar- global goals and we have a 169 targets also so for 15 years 17 goals and the 169 targets and these are given by united nations general assembly and it includes economic growth it includes social inclusion it includes environment protection so whenever you think of sustainable goals developmental goals three aspects you need to remember the first is economic growth second is environmental growth environmental conservation protection and the third is social inclusion also so from these three perspective sdg plays very important role and let's see the 17 goals also i would request i would suggest you to remember the 17 goals it's not very difficult take a print out and keep it in your room so that you would keep on looking at it it comes in handy while writing answers the prelims don't expect the questions but mains it comes in handy to write the answer the first is poverty goal number 1 goal 2 zero hunger goal 3 health goal 4 education goal 5 gender equality goal 6 clean water and sanitation goal 7 affordable and clean energy goal 8 decent work and economic growth and 9 industry innovation infrastructure 10 reduced equality see 5 and 10 you can relate it to it there is gender equality and here reduced inequality 11 sustainable cities 8 responsible consumption and production 13 climate action 14 life below water and 15 life above water that is life on land and 16 finally international peace so and the uh, sorry one more is the 17 that is partnership for the goals in order to achieve this you need a partnership also so partnership for the goals these are the 17 goals here. and let's see previous year question on this particular topic uh, two three times questions have come but now after 2018 uh, they have stopped asking questions on sustainable development goals but it comes in other examination like rbi nabard and state examination sustainable development goal is a hot topic there and let's see the 2016 question two statements and you, you need to find the right statement the first statement sustainable developmental goals were first proposed in 1972 yes this is true uh, by a global think tank called club of rome sorry uh, this is not the, the concept of sustainable development it was mentioned but the goals was mentioned in the 2012 in the uh, rio 20 plus 20 summit so first is wrong and the second statement is the sustainable developmental goals have to be achieved by 2030 this is true so only two is the right option here and this is it for the day guys this pdf is available in netbook study and i would request please like the video subscribe to the channel and subscribe to the uh, telegram channel also and uh, please do comment on the video so that it will help uh, for have a bigger reach for my videos and thank you so much for the listening have a good time